Hi everyone, my name is Nuno uh, from Sound Particles, and the idea is to have now a series of several tutorials about how to program SkyDust and how to program a, a synthesizer. Um, a lot of people use synthesizers, but only a few actually uh, know how to program a synthesizer. A lot of people simply use presets. Uh, so if you wanted to know more how to program a synthesizer, uh, this it's this series of videos, it's for you. The idea here is to show you almost like a basic school of programming synths. So if you already know uh, some things about programming synths, this definitely it's not for you. But if you want to know the very basics of how to program synth, that is to use SkyDust 3D and with that know a little more how to program um, a synthesizer. Well. Today, this video is going to talk, we are going to talk about oscillators. On the upcoming videos, we are going to talk about other things, envelope generators, LFOs, sequencer, and many other features of a typical synthesizer. Uh, but like I mentioned, today we are going to talk about uh, oscillator. So this is SkyDust. As you uh, know, there are several sounds here that you can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this special red one that says init basic sign. So this is a very basic template, only uses one oscillator. Uh, so we're going to select this. Um, if you want, you can come here and simply select all the templates that have basic templates created over here. But once again, this basic one. So what we have here? Well, we're going to talk about oscillators. Oscillators, it's uh, the, the first element of a synthesizer. So the synthesizer, we want to create audio. Um, so what we do is we have one, two, three, or many oscillators we want. And then for each note, this amount of oscillators will create the source material that then is changed with filters and other things like FEMs and other uh, approaches to create the sound that we are looking for. Currently, SkyDust works with eight oscillators per note, which means that in each note you can use up to eight oscillators. So if you have two notes, it's 16 oscillators and so on. In here, you have these oscillators. As you can see, only oscillator one is actually uh, uh, powered on. So you have this uh, oscillator one with a very sine waves, nothing fancy. Um, so let's start by knowing about oscillators. So, in here, we have several waveforms that you can use. Um, as you there is these four basic ones, the sine wave, the square, triangle, and the saw. Uh, so pretty much we have the sine, something more or less mellow, and then we have triangle with a little more brightness, not much. Then we have the square, even with more brightness. And then we have also the saw. So that is for you to start play with it, start, start to recognize more or less this kind of sound. Then when later on you want a particular sound, you already know, okay, probably if I'm wanting a lead, probably it's a square or a saw. Uh, if I want a more mellow, probably it's a triangle or a sign. So play with it. Also, besides these four main um, waveforms, uh, SkyDust has several uh, others, like this one, or this one. So there are multiple shapes here that you can use. Also, one other thing that a lot of oscillators uh, do is to also have multiple types of noises, things like this, white noise, or pink noise, or brown noise, or binary. So, and you may ask, okay, it's a synthesizer it's to play music, why do we want noises? Well, for instance, if you are want to create uh, percussions, uh, like uh, a snare drum or something like that, 
pretty much it's not an harmonic, it's pretty much noise filtered. Um, also, you may have a sound that you want to have a slight noise on the attack uh, to get a more brightness kind of sound uh, during the attack. So we, uh, later on, you're going to see that uh, having these um, noises can actually help you. Nonetheless, today we're going to focus mainly on these uh, four ones over here. Then, okay, we have this oscillator, for instance, a sine wave, and then what we're going to do is going to see that in here we have several waveform modifiers, which means these are models that are able to get this original oscillator, but then slightly changing in a way that allows us to get even more uh, difference in terms of sound. For instance, this silence. The simple fact that it adds a little science silence uh, after each waveform, so I have a sign that I slightly compress to have this silence and then another sign with the silence, another sign with the silence. This gives an um, interesting sound. So, and then we're going to see later on that if you use an LFO controlling these uh, uh, modifiers can even be quite interesting. So, we have this silence, like I mentioned. Another one is this amplitude offset, almost turning this into a square wave. We have wave folding, where pretty much the, at, at the, a certain point the wave starts to mirror down what uh, it should be done. Uh, also, there is another wave fold, but only with the positive side of things. Uh, also, we have clipping, creating more distortion uh, and turning into a square. We have also bit crusher, which means that you end up having this almost like this 8 bit kind of sound, usually used a lot in video games on the 80s. Um, and then finally, you have this. So, as you can see, by using waveform modifiers, you can turn a pretty dull kind of wave into a much more interesting thing. Of course, this applies also. I'm using sine, but we could use this with many others. So there are a lot of things that we can do here to create much more um, interesting result. Then after that, let's talk about gain, so it says pretty much I have here the gain. What I have here you can also have here on the mixer, so by doing this you can see that it's the, the same fader that is being controlled. Uh, and this is interesting, especially when we start having multiple oscillators because we want to shape the kind of sound. Imagine, for instance, that I come here and say, okay, I have a sine, but at the same time I have a square. Okay, so how much do I want one or the other, or something like a, a, a sawtooth. So pretty much this allows you to control the balance of the, the multiple waveforms that you are using on. Then we have this speech related knob. So pretty much imagine that I have a sound, but now I have one, one octave below, or one octave above, okay? Um, this could be interesting, especially imagine that I have here a few sounds, okay, but now, but now I want to add, for instance, a new oscillator that the only thing that it does is to have a sign but with one octave below. So, so essentially it makes a more bass kind of sound. So, making feel, feeling a little more on the bass kind of place. Also, in here, sometimes you may want to use the transpose. Uh, the transpose is pretty uh, used a lot. For instance, when we have fifths, for instance, imagine something like this. So pretty much it plays this oscillator on the same note and then plays this oscillator a few, uh, in this case a fifth uh, uh, above. Um, finally, we have the, the tune and the idea is to have, for instance, two oscillators. 
mm. and then slightly detune uh, one of them. For instance, imagine when you think, think about a violin, you, you have a solo violin with a slightly harsh kind of sound, but then if you start adding more violins, you end up with a string ensemble, and this, the sound is much more velvet kind of sound. And actually what happens is that every single violin is slightly detuned regarding uh, each other's, and that kind of slightly detuned makes the sound becomes much more rich. So, for instance, imagine the following. Imagine that I have here two square waves, okay? Um, by default, all of them would sound like this, but now if I start to detune one of them regarding the other, you'll, you'll get this kind of chorus, almost kind of sound. Okay, so... Usually, when you get this... So when you want something like this, the detune, my recommendation is you start by simply use the knob to find out the exact amount of detune that you want. Imagine that, okay, I like uh, 14, that's the kind of detune that I want. Then just to make sure that this uh, doesn't affect the tune of the actual the note, my, what we usually do is to simply put half in one and the other remaining as negative on the other. So you get like minus seven in one, plus seven on the other, and you get this compared with the original sound that were something like this. Okay, so once again, we have these oscillators. My recommendation is for you to start playing with this, start with this basic uh, sign only with one oscillator, start changing the oscillator types, play a lot with these waveform modifiers, use this octave transpose and detune to get this kind of sounds that you are uh, looking for, um, play around, and then when you are ready, you move to the next video that we are going to talk about envelope generators. So, see you in the next video.